let's look now at the gradient of a line. So we're going to specifically in this video look at gradients of straight lines. Straight lines are all around us. In a non-creepy way, there's definitely a straight line near wherever you are, maybe at the ceiling, the carpet, anywhere. So if we think of the term gradient, which is a mathematical term, what would that, if you translate maths into English, what would that be? So our English um, definition would be steepness. So a gradient is how steep a line is. So if you can imagine, I'm already here, this line there. If I did that, it's less steep because if I was walking up this road, it's not going to hurt as much. There, really steep. So now we know what the gradient is, we need to know how to work it out. So what's the mathematical formula for gradient? So I'm going to call gradient M. M means gradient, just ignore it. Now I'm going to write some new symbols, which you probably haven't seen before, which are triangle Y over triangle X. That triangle stands for delta, so that's delta Y over delta X, and that means change in Y over change in X. I was trying to save space, but I'm going to write it out anyway, so I haven't saved myself so much space. So gradient equals change, I'm just going to put Y, over the change in X. So hang on a minute, what's Y and X? So as we can see from my diagram here, this is Y, so it's kind of the change in the y-axis, and change in x is the change in the x-axis. So this is our formula. So we need to know gradient is the steepness of a line. It doesn't have to be straight, but we're looking at straight here. And to work it out, it's the change in y over the change in x. Now, I think some of you would have done this method where if you start here, you go along one, up one, along one, up one. If I went along one and up two, then the gradient is two. That approach sometimes doesn't always work if the line's a bit harder though, but as a quick way to do it, that, that is a good way. But I think it's very important to know this formula, delta y over delta x, change in y over change in x. So using this formula now, we're going to work out the gradient of this line. So we've got m equals delta y over delta x. Now we can't have a change in something if we've only got one point, so we're going to have to take two points on the line. Um, admittedly, this might not be the best line, but I'm going to take this point and I'm going to take this point here. So just two points on my line. So this point there, its coordinate is 1, 1, and this one here is 4, along 4, up 4. So the two points on my line. So now I need to work out the change in y over the change in x. So we've gone from 4, take away this one, so this bit here. And then divided by the change in x, so there we go, we've gone from 4 minus 1, which equals 3 over 3, which equals... 1. So the gradient is 1. The steepness of that slope is 1. So here we have change in y, which was, you can count it up, 1, 2, 3. And here we have the change in x, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so let's take two points on this line. Let's take this one and... This one, so I've done them free by, by free hand, so I'm not sure um, how accurate they are. So that's this point is what? So we've got zero along the corridor, up the stairs two. Here we've got along the corridor first, three, down the stairs, minus four. Okay, so we've taken our two points. We want the gradient, we want the steepness, so we're going to use the equation to work out gradient. So change in y. We want this bit, change in y, that is supposed to be on the line, I just don't want the panel black, over change in x. Let's work out the change in x, delta x. So from the x values we've gone from 3 to 8, 
to 0. So we've gone 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, so that's 3. If we look at the change in y, as we have to consider the sine, so we've gone from minus 4, and then we're going to minus 2. So this is times y. If we put that into our equation, m equals delta y over delta x, we have minus 6 divided by 3, g equals minus 2. If I wrote that in one place, that would be m equals, we start at this point, changing y, so minus 4 minus 2 over change in x, 3 minus 0. So to summarise what we've done there, we've got gradient is the steepness of a line, the gradient is the... So the first step to working out a gradient is you pick two points on the line and then you put those into your formula, change in y over change in x. Okay, let's have a look at some exam questions using the steps we've just learnt. So, one of them gives you two points, two coordinates, and it wants you to find the gradient of the line that passes between those two points. So, in the step one, it was pick two points, I didn't need to write this out, on the line. So that's done step one for us. Nice and easy. Do we stop? No, is it just on the whole question? That would be nice, wouldn't it? And then two was the equation change in y over change in x. Let's do that. So change in y. So we've gone from here, y minus 1. It's an, well, I'll do an example where this will change in a minute. And then change in x is 5 minus 2. So we've got 9 divided by 3, which equals 3. So that's your gradient there. I'm just going to show you an example. If I change this to coordinates to minus 1 and 5, 10, if I did the gradient now, change in y over change in x, I would get 10 minus, but this is now minus 1, so I'd get minus, minus 1, and then the bottom two are the same. So 2 minuses make a plus. 10 plus 1 over 3. So that would be an example of if you had a negative coordinate there. So this says you there's a line AB, very adventurous name. Point A and point B. Okay, that's got a K and that's not a number. Immediately a bit like freaked out. What's going on? Tells us the gradient is 5. Give us the answer. Mm. Unfortunately not, and it says work out K. Okay, get it? Okay. So let's look at our, let's go through our steps again. So that's one, pick points. Oh, it's done it again for us. Pick the point. Step two, let's go change in Y over change in X, the gradient. We're told here the gradient is five. Just kick up pick out the key information. Okay, and we're told the points, so let's put them in. So we've got change in y, so we've gone from k, just treat it like a number, just like a number. Take away, subtract, minus one. I've got that trick again. By the way, the change in x, which is six, take away two, these are the x values. They go first in the bracket, you can think of it, um, coordinates in alphabetical order, so you've got the x, then the y. XYZ. What's this? K plus 1 over 6 minus 2 is 4, and we know that equals 5. I'm just going to write this bit below and we're going to work on that. Okay, so I want to get K on its own, and this 4 is kind of annoying me. And on this side, it's K plus 1 is all divided by 4. And so when I take it over this equal sign, I want to do the inverse operation, which is so the opposite of divide is multiply, or the inverse. So I'm going to have K plus 1 equals 5 multiplied by 4, which is 20. Now here, I want k on its own. This is kind of annoying me now. So k equals, it's pl plus 1 on this side, 
which means it's minus 1 on that side, so 20 minus 1, which is 19, so k is 19.